Good morning everyone. It is Tuesday the 16th of March and it is a glorious day outside. The sun is shining. Such a good and beautiful day to come together and to read God's word. So this morning for our Lent reading we're going to be reading all of John chapter 9. Let's hear God's word. As Jesus was walking along he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Salome. Salome means scent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbours and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, isn't, isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, others said no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go and wash, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed and now I can see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know, he replied. Then they took the man who'd been blind to the Pharisees because it was the Sabbath that Jesus made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it. So he told them, he put the mud over my eyes and when I washed it away, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus is not from God, for he is working on the Sabbath. Other says, How could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division of opinion among them. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, What's your opinion about the man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leaders still refused to believe the man had been blind and could now see. So they called his parents. They asked him, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, how can he see now? His parents replied, we know this is our son and that he was born blind. But we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him. He's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah should be expelled from the synagogue. That's why they said, he is old enough, ask him. For the second time they called in the man who'd been blind and told him, God should get glory for this because we know this man Jesus is a sinner. I don't know whether he is a sinner, the man replied, but I know this, I was blind and now I can see. But what did he do, they asked, how did he heal you? Look, the man exclaimed, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they cursed him and said, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. For we know God spoke to Moses, but we don't know even where this man comes from. Why, that's very strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from? We know that God doesn't listen to sinners but he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he couldn't have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. You're trying to teach us, and they threw him out of the synagogue. When Jesus heard what has happened, he found the man and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Who is he, sir? I want to believe in him. You have seen him, Jesus said, and he is speaking to you. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said, and he worshipped Jesus. Then Jesus told him, I entered this world to render judgment, to give sight to the blind, to show those who think they see that they are blind. Some Pharisees who were standing near by him and asked, Are you saying we're blind? If you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty, Jesus replied, but you remain guilty because you claim you can see. Amen. And the end of another chapter of John's Gospel. Um, right at the very start of that, the disciples asked Jesus who had sinned because this man was blind. 
there was a, a thought, there was a superstition held amongst the Israelites that because of either your sin or your parents' sin, that you were born with a disability. Whether it be blindness, being lame, um, a poor hand, whatever it was, that it was down to sin. And Jesus declares very clearly, it's not because of sin. And in this case, he said, this happens so the power of God could be seen in him. It's hard to think that this man was born blind by intention because God was going to use him to speak to others, to speak to the Pharisees at the time and to speak to us today. Because this is very much uh, a, a, a miracle which talks about not just the physical healing, but also about the spiritual healing. Because in the blindness that Jesus is talking about, he's talking about spiritual blindness. He doesn't want us to be blind. He wants us to see. Um, and he, he accuses the Pharisees at the end they're guilty because they can't see because they do know the scripture. And yet they deny him and deny who he is. But it's hard to imagine at times that things happen to us beyond our control because God's going to use them. And that could be suffering. It could be illness. It could even sometimes be death, but that the God uses that for his glory and honour. That's a difficult thing to hear. It's a difficult thing for us to understand, but it's something which is so true. Um, and it's something that, as we, we look at, we have to surrender to God's will and to realise that he has the bigger plan, that we are just a small part of that and that he will use everything for his glory and for his honour. Um, as you think about that this morning, just think about what God is saying to you about maybe something that's going on in your life. And just by surrendering it over to him, how he takes control and how he can use everything, everything that looks bad for his glory, for his honour, for his goodness. Let's pray. Father, thank you again this morning for everything that you do for us. Lord, for all your goodness, for all your wonder, for all, all the amazing things that you do day in and day out. Lord, we admit that so often we don't see the purpose, we don't see the reason. And Lord, at times we cry out in pain because of what's going on. Lord, just help us to surrender everything to you this morning, realising that you, you are in control. And ultimately, you do use everything for your glory and your honour, even when we can't see it. Lord, thank you that you are in control. Thank you that you, who know so much more than us, holds us close, loves us and cares for us. Go with us now, we pray, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks, folks, for listening. I trust that you do have a blessed day today um, and you do take care and look after yourselves. See you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.